Good morning, YouTube. So, uh, was going to end the video on, what was it? On the Golf R, I think it was. But what I'll probably do, so that was a Saturday. It's now Monday morning, just waiting for a customer's 911 to pop in. Uh, but really, that first video would have just been a couple of days at GAD. So what I'll probably do, probably carry on for a couple more days with this particular, um, you know, week at GAD then maybe I'll do some other bits like properly go in depth when it comes to the like waiting area, some of the equipment we've got, maybe do a dedicated dyno dyno cell video, we'll do a dedicated waiting room video, maybe even do like a dedicated what equipment we use, filming and recording, um, you know, some of the tripods, they're just basic stuff. But it's just, yeah, I think maybe perhaps it'll be interesting so that everyone can see, you know, what goes on. Maybe I'll go through some of the fan systems because some of them, um, cooling systems, we've had to make ourselves because there wasn't really anything on the market, not at least affordable. Um, so we came up with some, some of our own solutions. So let me know in the comments below if there's any kind of bits that you guys would like to see on the channel. Uh, it's Like I say, it's more of a sort of vlog style um video so it's more just following the bits i get up to day to day really so yeah let, let us know all right guys a little bit noisy next one in uh mark eight golf r so just strapped it down on the dyno uh synchronization is all linked activating all the fans I will let you know how we get on. Um, that one, that one, that one. Yeah, it gets a little bit windy and a little bit noisy in it. Uh, I'll let you know how we do. right in the final calibration to the Golf R. Um, stock, so we had one in last week and it pulled, I think it was 316 horsepower stock, which is pretty decent, they're booked at 320. Uh, this one's pulled 318, so yeah, they seem to be, you know, really consistent cars. Uh, so far we're up to about, I think it was mid 380 horsepower mark made the last couple of little changes so we'll be into the 390s i would imagine quite comfortably um sorry hold on let me fling you around whenever you calibrate to cars especially via obd you're i think you're probably breaking a lot of communication with uh the other modules in the car so let everything minds <laughs> damper transmission faults everything uh, the tool is really good at um, clearing everything down after the fact. Sometimes stuff gets saved in the modules. So it's always worth, we always just run a tool through it at the very end, clear everything down. So that way when we road test, I come back in, scan everything again, we can see if anything has developed. Not that it ever does, but it's always worth the check. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know when we finish up what we end up on. Really happy with that. Customer's going to be over the moon. Uh, 
yeah, now it is, again, a bit of road testing, make sure it's happy, transmission, etc, etc, make sure the functionality is still there. So yeah, that should be one happy client. Got the boys from JBS sorting out the tyres on the Huracan. Got John making some noise. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go have a quick look at this. Have a look. Yeah, now that John's uh, stopped making a racket, we've got uh, Justin, we've got the guys at JBS Tyres. Clients Huracan was in desperate need of some tyres. As you can see, so Justin and the uh, Justin and the boys have come saved the day. Look at that though, proper Batman spec. But then the customer came in this. I'll show you this. Just making my way over to it now. Customer's also got. Look at that. V10 M5, beautifully styled. Basically, fully straight piped. Also has, I believe you said it's the development. Um, even cherry intake was done on his one. He just fired it up. I managed to get a video on my phone. So what I'll do when I edit this video up, I'll drop that one in and you can hear, don't get me wrong, it's loud because of the exhaust, but that intake roar is insane. So yeah, you'll be able to hear that as well. It's a beast. Go on in. Good morning everyone. We have a stunning Aston Martin Vantage in. This is the, um, I was about to say, the uh, the current shape, obviously yesterday was the launch of the new Vantage. So this particular model is a 2019. It has the um, M177, the AMG, engine which we have a lot of experience in found in c63s the dry sump version is obviously found in amg gt gts and then upgraded gtr black series etc so we will get cracking on this one we will start getting it on the dyno i'll get it strapped down get it brought back up to temperature temperature back into the tires and we will see what she does stock so we'll have a little walk around of the car look at this Gorgeous. There is quite a lot of bleed over with this, as much as Aston Martin say um, that there's not. Obviously, transaxle gearbox like the GT uh, AMG, but obviously the gearbox brand is completely different. Um, but I'll take you around the back. Look at this, stunning. Just what a gorgeous car. Look at that. A little bit wet, weather's a bit um weather's a bit rubbish today. So we've got a like DeWalt leaf blower. So it's just to get the most most of the moisture off the car. Really, you don't you want to try and eliminate getting as much water anywhere near the electromagnetic brake in the dyno. Um, they get really, really hot anyway. So if there was any moisture, it would probably just burn it off. But it's always worth better to be safe than sorry. So I will get underneath the car, get it strapped down, and then we'll start getting some baseline figures, logging and seeing exactly how it is performing now. ECU is exactly the same as what's on C63 AMG GT. It's the MED17 platform, um, fifth version of it, 0.5. These particular ones, our software sorry the hardware that we use the protocols one of them you have to do them on the bench the other tool we have accesses them via obd so we'll do that because these are a little bit trickier to get to than um the likes of the gts so yeah i will pop in a video of it on the dyno
me quickly spin this around and you can have a look. So these are booked at 503 horsepower from factory, the 510 PS, and this pulled 502 horsepower. Um, these are booked at, you know, under 700 newton meters, but on our dyno, our dyno does quite often read torque a little, little higher than um, specified. Probably something to do with the way the um, dyno is, you know, absorbing the torque. These we run in fifth gear, it's got the ZF eight speed box. So fourth gear would simply be um, too short. You wouldn't get enough resolution in the run to actually see what's going on. And sixth gear, not only would really sixth gear is too long, um, also we'll end up smashing past the dyno's maximum speed limit. So we'll end up chopping out the top end of the graph anyway. So fifth gear, absolutely perfect. Fifth gear, we end up at about 100, I think I saw on the dash, 153, 154 mile an hour. So going, we're going quick, um, but it's the perfect ramp rate. Really simulates how the car would perform in that gear on the road. And then obviously from there, we can log a monitor and every, monitor everything. It's obviously bang on the money because they're booked at 503 at the crank and the dyno's calculated 502.7 at the crank. So um, if I'm honest, with a lot of the turboed v8 um mercedes engines so your 176 177 178 engines they're usually on our rollers within a horsepower of oem claimed so i will show you i've probably got some more clips that i'll now feed in of um you know maybe more of the power run etc and then afterwards i'll show you where we end up so yeah catch you catch you in a little bit We are all done. So 502 horsepower, uh, pulled 758 newton meters of torque stock. Like I say, quite a bit more than OEM quote. Um, we usually find that with our dyno, they can be a little on the torquey side. Ended on, um, here it is, 581 horsepower, 881 newton meters of torque. So an absolutely huge difference. Customer is going to be over the moon quick little something that might interest you it's the same on c63s uh, and amg gt equivalents so the turbos it's being a hot v the turbos are in the center of the of the v um under bonnet temperatures get to hundreds and hundreds of degrees so obviously to combat this you see these shields on top everything actually scoops down with the bulkhead and all that heat shielding scoops down so what happens is airflow comes in through here into this duct and it's shot over the turbos. So the turbos themselves, it's not so much like it's not really going to um, cool the turbos down as such. It's just going to expel so much um, of that ambient heat that otherwise would just get stuck under the bonnet. And then, obviously, as we all know, heat soak. Heat is the killer of performance. So they've obviously, in testing, seen temperatures get just, you know, massive due to turbo placement. Um, and to combat that, it's got its own fresh air feed. And it literally will just throw fresh air over the tops of the turbos, over the primary cats, and then everything just scoops down. So all that heat just gets expelled under the car. Yeah, little little um, insight into how they design this stuff. The engineers are absolutely fantastic that make these things. Honestly, you, you look at stuff, you take cars apart and you look at stuff and you sometimes you're in awe, you just see they genuinely have thought of so much stuff. Not just thought of stuff, obviously stuff comes up during testing, but you know, things they do to combat thermal control and um, you know, design packages for different platforms this engine has to go in. They just they just think of everything. 
holding session and lunch. Here we go, Zena's on her way out.